Okay, we're looking we're looking at amino acid categories. So we're going to talk a little bit about amino acids here, a little bit more detail. So first, uh, the main things we should know about these um, aliphatic uh, amino acids is that they are straight chains and they don't have uh, phenol rings. Next, the um, aromatic uh, amino acids, they do have phenol rings. And next we're going to talk about um, the um, acetic amino acids and these uh, fall on the lower end of the PK scale and then oppositely we have the basic amino acids and they are on the higher end of the PK scale. And then there are uh, those that uh, contain sulfur. And then, then there are the cyclic amino acid categories. And these are important because they can determine the particular function of the amino acid, um, how it folds and how it functions within the cell. So let's talk a little bit about these amino acid categories. It's known that your door is always open and your path is free to walk. Okay, we're going to talk about categories of amino acids from the very basic to the more complex. So just some of the basics here. So let's start looking first at the uh, small amino acids, small amino acids because they're very small. And you can notice the very basic form here and uh, some differences that make them change. And so let's look at the R groups. We can notice that the difference, differences in the R groups result in changes in the amino acids. They become different amino acids. So just look at that for a second. Okay, how about the uh, branch chain amino acids? Well, they look like they're branching, so that's easy to tell. So we need to remember some of the circumstances, some of the characteristics of these amino acids. For example, leucine. And leucine is used in the regulation of uh, cell signaling. And it is important uh, for, uh, in its use in uh, protein synthesis and in other signaling uh, pathways. So remember that leucine is uh, used in uh, uh, cell signaling. How about the uh, hydroxyl amino acids? What's special about these? Well, first we can notice this hydroxyl group. This might set them apart. Uh, but what's very important about this hydroxyl uh, group, these or hydroxyl amino acids, is that they play a very important role in uh, protein phosphorylation. And that only three of them can actually do it. So you have serine, threonine, and uh, tyrosine. And tyrosine is the only one that's aroma, um, aromatic. But remember that tyrosine, threonine, and ser serine are the ones that uh, uh, phosphorylate proteins. And so what does that mean? Protein phosphorylation, that is when uh, you transfer a, pro a phosphate group uh, from ATP to a hydroxyl group or an R group, which results in the change um, or confirmation of a protein which starts the action going it, then it can do work uh, it uses the ATP for energy it binds to something which causes a change so let's think about remember which ones are branched and which ones are small and which one regulates cell signaling remember that one was leucine and uh, which uh, which group are used for uh, phosphorylation. There are three. Serine, threonine, and tyrosine. Okay, so moving on to the next group, let's look at the sulfur amino acids. What's special about these? Well, let's look um, at uh, cysteine. Cysteine is important in uh, forming disulfide bonds, protein bonding. Uh, they stick to each other and um, the uh, sulfur amino acids uh, are the only ones that can do that, I believe. But so why, why is it that uh, threonine cannot um, uh, form disulfide bonds? Well, if you look up here, uh, perhaps it's because 
of the methyl group that does not allow the sulfur uh, to bond. It cannot connect to form a, a disulfide bond. Anyway, another thing to remember about methionine, very important thing about that is that it is the start codon um, in DNA. And this is um, when you're thinking about the, uh, the ribosomes and the formation of proteins and what is the first codon, it is that um, uh, methionine. So when you just want to talk a little bit more about uh, this section, especially about the hydroxyl amino acids against serine, threonine, and tyrosine, uh, if a protein has low level low levels of these proto uh, proteins, then it cannot be phosphorylated, and uh, so they're going to have a difficult uh, difficulties in um, cell signaling. So I'm going to ask a question here. What would you, what do you call a protein that phosphorylates another protein? That's called a kinase. And kinases are important for transferring phosphates um, from ATPs and uh, making and creating some action. And remember that there are only three that are involved in this, and these are the hydroxyl amino acids serine, threonine, and tyrosine. Okay, let's look at the next section. Okay, we're looking at uh, categories of amino acids, and we're going to look now at amino, I mean, acetic amino acids and the derivatives. So, let's just look at the shape and we can maybe guess uh, why they are acetic. So, taking a look here, um, oh, I just realized that I didn't talk about aroma, uh, aromatic amino acids, so go back here. The um, arom aromatic amino acids are obviously, they have uh, uh, the phenol rings, which makes them aromatic, and this is what gives them their, these, their characteristics. So moving on, let's talk about acetic amino acids. So first off, you can notice uh, that uh, they have this group which uh, makes them more acetic. And uh, for example, aspartate here has two. So this is going to be acetic. And uh, you notice that uh, the, the carboxyl group, you can see on the others too, um, would be more than if they were basic. I think my mouse to work. So looking down at the basic amino acids, we can see that there are more um, amine groups. So they, remember, the amine groups of the amino acids are the basic parts. Uh, my mouse is not working, so I can't show you. But the uh, amino acids are the basic parts, and which would raise the pH. And then if we look down um, at the uh, the cyclic amino acids. For example, here we have proline. Uh, proline. Proline is an alpha, I should say, amino acid, and it plays an important role in the conformation of proteins. And the reason it plays an important role in the conformation of proteins is that it can allow them to make a curve or a, sort of a kink in the chain. It helps the amino acid to change direction. So proline is an important amino acid. So it's important to understand how these categories of amino acids uh, give the the amino acids their characteristics and let's try to remember thanks very much